I'm sure anyone who's seen Tokyo Drift has always wondered what it's like to drift. And I'm no different. When I arrived at Drift Limits, we were told there would be two cars to drive, a Mazda MX-5 and a Nissan 350Z. This figure eight track was actually the oiled section of our runway, so it was more like drifting on ice than traditional drifting. So here's what happened on my first attempt. The instructor took me on a scouting lap with basic instructions being punch the throttle when you go into the corner and counter steer. For the first few laps, I didn't really expect much. I was just trying to get a feel for the car. To be honest, my biggest worry was overdoing it. People kept on telling me that drifting needs a delicate touch and that I was probably going to go full send and I kind of wanted to prove them wrong. Lap after lap, the realization set in that this is probably going to be something I need a lot more time and practice with. The initial excitement for drifting had calmed and my new focus was simply not spinning the car. I kept alternating between too much throttle and spinning the car, or not enough throttle and barely spinning the wheels. At the start, I was quietly confident. I thought after a few laps of feeling the car, I would somehow be able to kick the car into a drift. But this wasn't just my first time drifting. This was my first time in a real wheel drive car, so what made me think I actually stood a chance on this greased up track? Now that the rain had started, this only got harder. It was so unpredictable. The track was slick with oil, and just outside that was all a grip. And now the rain had brought in a new element of super slippy sections all around the track. I mean, ideal for a first session. What's funny is I even opted for a few extra laps instead of the donut session, but the way I was going, they were basically the same thing. I cannot tell you how many times I spun this car. Even having a near miss at one point, nearly crashing into a 350Z. Although this moment was pretty funny. At least I wasn't the only one spinning it all the time. I spun the car again, and again, and again, and a few more times after that. At this point, I was really kicking myself and I started to wonder if I'd ever get a decent drift. It seemed like pure fluke if one of the corners actually worked. We were coming towards the end of my time in the MX-5 and I'd barely avoided spinning the car on each corner. Never mind actually drifting. Thanks to the track drying up a little in these last few laps, I started to get a feel for the car. I managed to hold a couple of corners. That brought it close to the first session and we took a little break while they ordered the track for the second. Jumping into the 350Z was pretty cool for me as I've actually considered buying one. With this extra power I was really hoping that it would help me initiate the slide. Because in the Mazda it was a bit weird, I had to hold down the pedal and then let off at the right moment as the wheels gained momentum. Initially I went back to the same struggle, I was either spinning the car or not spinning the wheels. Towards the edge of this corner, you can see it's quite slippy, and you can feel it's quite slippy. Yeah. As you get to that slippy, slippy bit, just dip the clutch and wait for it to glide out. 
and that will help save you from spinning. It'll kind of keep you closest to the crank line. Is it best to try and hold on with two hands or one? I normally kind of mix between the two. But I'll start with these. If I'm trying to feed this wheel through, I find one hand quicker. I kind of palm it with one hand and really spin it quick. Then finally, the tipping point happened. I started to get the shallow corners in the middle of the figure of eight. I finally felt like this wasn't just luck anymore, and I was finally feeling the inputs that made my drift better or worse. There we go, there we go. That was good, that was good. And as you get to that, kind of come off and save me for grabbing up again, it's back on the car. My instructor kept giving me tips and I have to admit, the level of concentration I was using, I'm not sure on half the things he said. Nice and slow, nice and slow, don't. Now turn the power. There we go, there we go. Power, power, power. There we go. But, I am sure that some of it was going in, as I managed to hit my first large corner. Definitely that wider line on that bottom corner makes it a lot easier. The extra power definitely made a difference. A quick blip of the throttle was enough to initiate the drift, versus holding the throttle down for a couple of seconds in the MX-5. Nice done. So we wait really late to turn power on this corner. Really late. No. No. so much you kind of will then let off wait for it to try and straighten up things and get back into the power so now turn the power there we go i don't know if it was the car me improving or track drying out but the 350 felt so much better to drive i felt like more of the things i was trying to do were actually happening it felt like I was maybe getting to grips with the feeling of going sideways. Going through all that again. Leave it really late to turn. So now turn the power. There we go. There we go. The power, 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 power. It's kind of like this way because it's a bit grippier. As it goes to transition, to flick towards the right to face towards the field. Give it that extra loss, like stamp of power as you're about to let off. And then this happened. <clears throat> I think the shocked look on my face prompted my instructor to say everything was okay. Thankfully the car was actually fine, so we got straight back into it. And although I 
kept on spinning, I could usually tell by this point what I'd done wrong. So I was definitely learning. That's right. So there, where, it's, where you kind of took the wrong line, you could have saved it by giving it more power. By giving it more power, you were rotating quicker and sharper to continue back onto the track. Kind of, you have to kind of break that, like, that thought process of like, you know when you're on the road, if you get too close to you break, you slow down. Yeah. You can kind of power it more and rotate more. By rotating more, you're then no longer pointing to get the object you, you're going, that you were going towards. so close to linking the corners, my desperation got the better of me and I began to lose control and concentration. I kept messing up the corners that I was capable of only a few laps before. You're getting that transition, which is, you're getting it on the way up, almost. It's just, it's trying to get that line right when you come back to this corner down here. The day was epic. I learned a lot and I definitely want to do it again. They say practice makes perfect and maybe next time I'll nail those corners. Thank you for watching and if you like this video don't forget to like, comment or subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.